Good afternoon. This is the Data Journalism Korea Conference 2021 Part 2. My name is Hwang Hyun Jung, and I belong to the Digital Communication Research Center at Kungo University. We now like to begin the Part 2 of the conference, Data Journalism Tech and Method. Then we will now invite the moderator for part two, Ms. Choi Jin Soon, who is the journalist at the Korea Economic Daily. Please give her a big hand. Hello, as introduced, my name is Choi Jin Soon from the Korea Economic Daily. So I have the honor of being the moderator for this session. So the topic of this session is data journalism tech and method. Uh, allow me to introduce the first speaker. The first speaker is Mr. Chu Jae-sun, CEO of Speechlog. So he uh, majored in visual design. And he is well versed in the game market. And he established a Korean language school in China, in Namgyeong. And the title of his presentation is How to Analyze and Utilize News Data Focusing on Speech and the Speakers. Hello. As introduced, my name is Chu jae I'm the CEO of Speechlog. So Speechlog is a company that records words or speeches. So although we're not a media company or reporters, thank you for inviting me and my company to give presentation at this conference. So we extract speech and speakers from news data and see how we can make use of them. Then allow me to explain what we do in detail. So the order of my presentation is introduction and what we can find out through the data that is extracted from speech and the speakers. And through these extracted data, we are conducting some pro projects, and I would like to introduce them. One project is about establishing a people's dictionary, and another project is analyzing the competitiveness of presidential candidates. And I would like to also give you some use cases. So all news comes from speech. Since September 1st to 31st in 2021, so for a period of a year, we included around 91 media companies, including central daily newspapers and so on. And we took a closer look at them uh, in terms of their political economy, international culture, and social articles. And among them, 94% of them included speeches. Only 6% did not include any speech. And the extracted speech data was about 850. 58,138. So in other words, most of the news that are published here in Korea stem from the speech that we make. So based on these extracted speech in news, uh, we thought about how we can make use of them. So from media, broadcast, and communication, we extracted the speech data, and we categorized them into their contents, the speaker, issues and keywords, the timeline, and the media, and the journalist. And so we, in other words, expanded the data and reestablished it. And once we reestablished the data, we were able to develop a new lens through which we saw society. We were able to compare the speakers and gauge the power of the message of the speaker, their impact on certain issues, the issues flow, and who, or the person who actually makes those issues or the issue who the mission makers is, and uh, what kind of uh, related keywords are deemed important to those speakers, and what share or the percentage that they take up in terms of an issue and people's response as well. So through the speech data and speaker data, 
we conducted some analysis. So let me tell you about the analysis and what we can find from those analyses. So we have about eight themes under this part one. And other than these eight themes, uh, other types of analysis can, of course, be added here. So first, we can compare policies and certain issues between speakers based on the analysis. So when we compile certain speeches made by a certain individual on an issue, we can figure out what kind of attitude or perception this person has about that certain issue. Um, so this is a data ranging from September 21st to October 4th. And this is about the speeches made by presidential candidates Lee Jae-myung and Lee na -kyun on real estate. And so based on that, we try to see what their policies on real estate is and uh, how they approach this issue. So looking at Lee Jae-myung's speech based on some timeline, the key thing that he talked about was the redemption of real estate development profit. And as for uh, the candidate Lee na -kyun, he mostly talked about eradicating corruption. So in other words, uh, real estate issues are a topic of hot debate these days. And we compare the speeches of these two presidential candidates to see what they focus on with regards to these real estate issues. And if we combine speakers and issue, we can assess the speaker's power of influence on the issue. So in other words, by looking at uh, what percentage or what sh how, much sh how much share they have in certain issues, we can tell who is the quote unquote issue maker. And we looked at four topics, real estate, basic income, vaccine, and disaster relief fund. And this data was collected from, oh, this data is based on the data collected from January 1st to June 26, 2021. And with regards to uh, the real estate, uh, Lee Jae-myung occupied 10% of the share, followed by Hong Nam-gi and Moon jae -in. And for basic income, Lee Jae-myung had 48% of the share. So in other words, during this given period, the person who led the real estate issue or the issue maker of real estate was Moon Jae-in, followed by Hong Nam-gi and Lee Jae-myung. And as for the basic income, Lee Jae-myung is the one who had the biggest share and therefore is the one who's a issue maker in terms of the basic income. And next is the related keyword for the speaker. So if we combine the speaker plus the keyword, we will be able to find out what the speaker's items of interest are. And we call them related keywords. So from December 8th of 2020 to December 14th of 2020, we looked at uh, the related keywords for Lee Jae-myung, and those were Governor of Gyeonggi Province and Disaster Relief Fund. And the picture below was, is a chart that was introduced, that big board chart, and it shows the related keywords for Seoul Mayor Oh Se-hoon, and they were single candidacy, An Chol Su, candidates, and uh, People's Power Party. So in other words, Single candidacy, An Chol Su, presidential candidates, and People Power Party are the four items of interest for Oh Se Hum. Next is about the issue flow. If we combine time and issue together, you'll be able to see what the issue's flow is. In other words, we can find out, based on this issue flow, what the life cycle of this issue is. The chart on the top right is about the allegation that the prosecution, prosecution instigated the opposition party to file criminal complaints. And the graph at the bottom is about the Daejangdong scandal. So at the top, it's based on data from July 21st to October 20th. And uh, we saw how this issue of Kobar Sarju, or like I said before, the allegation on the prosecution changes day by day. And it hit the peak uh, in the second week of September. And then it disappeared it suddenly. As you can see, the graph suddenly declines steeply. And there are many reasons for that. And with regards to the Daejangdong scandal, the, it, that scandal also hit its peak on the second week of September. So in other words, the 
issue regarding the prosecution was actually covered by uh, the attention that the Taejangdong scandal received. Um, so to explain more, around the end of uh, August, the issue of Taejangdong was first mentioned in social media and it spread to uh, online communities in September 10th. And around September 14th, the second channel movement uh, occurred uh, when it was reported on the media. So it shows us that the Taejangdong scandal started from social media and went through community and then finally reached the media to reach its peak. So although we need, need to do more research on this, on this, um, the issue of Taejangdong's power of influence has surged greatly in the recent days. And now, if we co if we combine the amount of speech plus the amount of articles that deal with the speech, we can figure out what kind of impact or how much impact the speech has. So the speech of a certain speaker would be reflected in newspaper articles. And we believe that the amount of articles relative to the amount of speech actually indicates the impact that the speech has. If you look at the graph on the top right, the x-axis shows the amount of speech, and the y-axis shows the amount of articles. And the person at the top right is the one who has many amount of articles relative to the amount of speech. The person on the bottom left has a small amount of articles relative to the amount of speech. The one who has uh, the great greatest uh, amount of articles relative to the amount of speech is Lee Jae-myung, followed by Yoon Seo-gyeol, Lee Na-kyung, Choi Jae-yeong, Hoon Jung-pyo, Won Il-yong, An Chul-su, and Yoo Seung-min. So we don't know what correlation this has uh, on with regards to the public preference of these candidates. Uh, but this data, this graph is based on data from October 18th to 24th. And we we're able to see that the person who has the greatest speech impact is Lee Jae-myung, followed by Yoon Seo-gyeol. And the dotted line that is on, uh, go, that goes across the chart shows us that the top left half uh, space shows that there is a great amount of articles, whereas the top uh, bottom right space shows that there is a smaller number of articles. And therefore, we can say that the speech impact of Yoon Seok Yeol is greater than that of Lee Na Kyun. And the graph on the bottom right shows a graph based on data from July 23rd to August 5th and it shows a speech impact of the candidate, Yoon Seok Yeol. So the blue stick shows the amount of articles and the orange stick shows the amount of speech. And we could see that compared to other candidates, the amount of articles that he, uh, covered the speech of Yoon Seok Yeol was greater than other candidates relative to the amount of speech that he made. And especially uh, the remarks that he made uh, around the time in July were uh, the focus of the media articles. And now let's look at the speech influence. If a speech of a certain individual is quoted in the media, that would indicate the person's the influence that the speech has. So in other words, the number of times a speech was quoted in the media indicates the speech's influence. And for about a week, uh, from April 30th to May 7th, uh, we created a ranking, which is called the Weekly People Ranking, in which um, ranks uh, people whose speech was quoted the most number of times in the media. And the first person who was on the top of the list is President Moon Jae-in. And at the bottom right, uh, this actually shows uh, what speech made by this certain individual made the most number of articles. And it's a comment made by lawmaker Cho Soo-jin. 
And the speech that she made on a certain day uh, led to the publishment of 90 articles uh, showing the greatest amount of exposure. So we can say that this certain speech made by lawmaker Cho Su Min, Cho Su Jin, had the greatest amount of influence on that certain day. And the person who had the greatest speech influence is when we look at uh, other people. Uh, it is Kim Yo-jung of North Korea. You know, it's her statement that she will blow up South Korea. And around 1,000 articles were written quoting that remark. So to date, um, this remark has the greatest speech impact and speech influence in a single day. And when the speech is quoted, in the media, we can compare how the story based on the speech is written between different media outlets. So in other words, we can see how the media, different media writes the story differently while quoting the speech. So on September 28th, 2020th, uh, during the high-ranking official meeting, the President Moon Jae-in made a remark, and many media quoted the remark that he made in that meeting. But one media outlet quoted his speech in a different way. So the Joseon Ilbo article title was this, President Moon provides his condol condolences just a week after person A goes missing and there is no rebuke towards North Korea. So this was quite different from the speech, uh, the exact remark that was made by President Moon Jae-in. Afterwards, the title of this article was revised. And next, uh, we can compare the keywords of the issue that are a present in the media and social media. And by comparing keywords extracted from media articles and those from social media, we can make comparison between the voice of the media and the voice of the public and what they deem as important. So the media keywords and social media keywords were highly similar, although they do differ in terms of their rank. So, but there were some differences in the keywords as well. So if you look at the news keywords, ranked at the fourth is COVID-19. But if you look at the social media keyword and online community keyword, um, it does not rank on the fourth of the list. So this may show that the general public is becoming tired of reading and hearing about COVID-19. And, you know, ranked at the fifth in the news keyword is uh, People's Power Party. But in social media, in community, People's Power Party ranked 13th and 19th, respectively. So the news media, the media outlet actually considers the keyword People Power Party as very important, but that's not so the case in social media and community. And as for Democratic Party, uh, they ranked fourth in both social media and community. And as you know, this is right before, be right after the elections and the Democratic Party was caught up in some controversies. However, in the news keyword, it was not even ranked in the top 20. The keyword Democratic Party was not ranked in top 20 at all. So the keywords of the news and keywords of the general public do have their differences in terms of their rank. And another important keyword is Nuriho vessel, which ranked ninth in social media and also ninth in community, but it did not rank in top 20 in the news. So the speeches and the speaker data that are in the news allows us to gain a new perspective of the world. And based on these data, we are currently pursuing a project, and I would like to tell you about that. So if we want to know about a certain person, what do we do? 
we usually go to online porters or uh, people dictionary and search for that person. In porters, portals, you can see their date of birth, their affiliation, their position and career. And you, know, you can basically see a lot of resources and data material about that person and in dictionaries as well in Wikipedia. For example, you can see uh, text-based information. However, those do not provide us an idea about the people's, that certain individual's thoughts, ideology, likings, people and places of their interest, related events, and their areas of interest. A person's speech is a reflection of that person's thought. So during the August 15th congratulatory speech, you know, we often, uh, made by Moon Jae-in, President Moon Jae-in, um, we sometimes hear the words, keywords like Japan or North Korea being mentioned, and depending on the amount of the word Japan and North Korea being mentioned, we can see um, that uh, President Moon Jae-in really has interest in those two areas. And so the words that are usually expressed, the speeches, really contain that person's thought. And the people and places and events and areas that the, a person mentions often is an item of his or her interest. During the past 10 years, uh, we took four 47 million data from 54 media outlets and we, based on that data, we try to find out who the people of interest is for candidate Lee Jae-myung. So in other words, we looked at the names of these people that Lee Jae-myung frequently mentioned based on newspaper articles that were published. So as you can see, Lee Jae-myung mentioned people like Park Geun-hye, Moon Jae-in, and Noh Moo-hyun. And people who were mentioned together with Lee Jae-myung were Moon Jae-in, Lee Na-kyung, and An Chol Su. We did the same thing for location or geography. So the location of Lee Jae-myung's interest was Gyeonggi-do, Gyeonggi province, the Seongnam city, and the Republic of Korea. And locations that were usually mentioned together with Lee Jae-myung in newspaper articles was uh, not the Korean Peninsula, but Gyeonggi Province, Seoul City, and Seongnam City, and also uh, Gwangju, and so on. Then, and we can also analyze who Lee Jae-myung is, what kind of person he is based on his speech. And we can see um, you know, the events that he is associated with, his affiliated organizations, his affiliated locations, and so on. So if you look at this data, the related people for Lee Jae-myung is Moon Jae-in, Lee na and An chol su related locations is Gyeonggi Province, Seoul City, and Songnam City, and related organization is Democratic Party, Government, and National Assembly. So, and also, we can see his thoughts about certain events based on these data as well. For example, what he thinks about the April 15th uh, event and so on. And I would like to also tell you that by analyzing these data, we can uh, analyze the competitive power of each presidential candidate. Uh, so we have seen Won Yi Ryong through the impact of speech and compared him to Che Jae Hyung and Yoon Seok Yeol. In other words, we saw how many articles are being published uh, with regards to Won Hee Ryong's uh, remarks. Uh, and uh, you can see that the number of articles that is being churned out for Won Hee Ryong has been increasing since uh, July 20th when he said he's going to run for the pres run for presidency. And by looking at the share uh, that an individual has about a certain remark, we can also see the impact of his or her speech. And now let's take a look look at a map that shows the location of Won Hee Ryong's speech impact, which allows us to compare his speech impact with that of other candidates. So I explained this earlier, but at the top left is the place where the speech impact will be great. So in other words, compared to other candidates, the amount of articles is high relative to the amount of speech. So and on the bottom right in the blue square, it shows that compared to the other candidates, both the amount of articles is low relative to the amount of speech. 
So we can make people dictionary and also conduct a competitive analysis uh, based on the data that we collect. Uh, and the data that were released in so as I said before, these data are extracted from news. And once the data is extracted and organized, they are again broadcasted in news programs. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chu Jae-sun, for your interesting presentation. So the presidential election will be held next year. And I think based on your presentation, we can really take a look at how the media is portraying the candidates and what kind of remarks were made by the candidates. So it was indeed an interesting presentation. Now allow me to introduce the next speaker. And our next speaker is Park in hye reporter at the media platform team of Hanguk Ilbo. Ms. Park has been working in the journalism for the last 15 years. She has spent most of her career in the data journalism and the internet-related businesses, and she is kind of a planner in this business. And her topic today is also quite exciting, and would you please start now? Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Park In Hye. I'm a planner at the media platform team in Hanguk Ilbo. So, my topic today is the data journalism and interactive planning. Most of you might not be familiar with the job of planner. In other companies, as my understanding goes, data journalism is covered by the journalist and the designers and publishers as well. But in Hanguk Ilbo, we have a job called planner, just like me. So we are able to explain to you what data journalism is doing from the perspective of the planners. This is my team. I'm going to introduce this. We have the team leader. Reporting to the team leader is planner, designer, publisher, and developer. We have eight people all together. You might be interested in knowing what we are doing. As journalists, we are also covering IT business as well. So we are doing IT and content as our business areas. And we do have the planning and designing for the dot com. And also we have CMS hub system improvement. And also we do the statistics improvement for the headquarters. And that's related to the IT. The other part is about the interactive planning and GIF graphic designing are other parts of my business as well. So we are also doing the research on developing contents. When we do the interactive and planning, what is the job description and how long does it take? In the newsroom and also in the media platform team, sometimes they are initiating the ideas about the reporting. Sometimes data is sent, and the collection of data is also following. Also, we are doing the pre-job before going to the newsroom. And then decision making is done by filtering the content idea. If you are a journalist, you will know that the collection and analysis of data might prove differently than we thought in the beginning. Probably data you get is not big enough to be covered in an article. Or sometimes you might be disappointed by not seeing the insight from these raw data. Only when you believe that there is a value as an article, you decided to carry on. In between you reporters and the raw material, I am there as a planner. I'm doing the pre-job for the journalist. After my job is done to have the collection of the meaningful raw data, you go ahead with your writing. By job description, we have our processes. By period, it will take some time. As a planner, I am writing one page, taking about three days. Then my job is 
converted to designers. Designers will take another three days. And this is the process of making draft. The draft is to be reviewed. So altogether, it will take about seven days for the reviewing. And then the job goes to the publishers and web front development people. It will take another three days. Also, depending on the quality you want, sometimes you need to have the developers or sometimes you don't. If you, you need developers, it will take another two to three days. In an average, from starting to the end, from initiation to the completion, it takes at least two weeks. But at two weeks is actually the minimum. So you have to say that this is taking three weeks. Therefore, when you start a business, you have to think of the collaboration with the newsroom. And also you have to think of how you can meet the deadline. So this is the list of the interactive cases that I can show you. So we are working with newsroom, as I said, or oh, sometimes we can be standalone as well. So we have the planning reporting team and multimedia team and the social affairs team. So they are all working with us, the media platform team. So I told you that normally it takes two to three weeks to complete the whole article. Sometimes, therefore, if it is necessary to finish the article within a much shorter time, we cannot collaborate. What we are normally collaborating is the type of articles that are investigative and also very meaningful and historical. So they are subject to the collaboration. So these are the very good examples. We had the results of the investigation and the supervision on the elementary school and also the preschools. We had the results that was covered that were covered by our article. There was very good response and also we had the hearing of the appointment of the people, including the minister of the uh, government. And also we had the connection to the platform. The results were seen online in real time. I was very proud to say that we were able to do that. Also, we have the cabinet making process so that people can just take a look at what is really going on in the government. So without bias, they're able to see and observe what the government is doing. Also, we had a new do documentary or the news program that is about the supervisors above your heads. That's about the satellite issues that you are underneath. So that was very informative. And also, it took the longest time, like in two months. But the opening time was almost like the starting time of the COVID-19. So it kind of lost attention from the people. So I am very sorry for that job, although I took a lot of time there. Many of the media companies are doing the collaboration of their own sort. So the way I am working with the me news media room can be relevant to your side as well. So that's how we start from now on. So we confirm and receive the plans for the article. So there was one or two page draft of the planning. So that talks about the content and the purpose of the news program. And then based on that, we are having the meeting with the reporters. What we are checking at that moment is to see the findings of the reporters about the case and also how long will it take or how much will be covered will be discussed. And then we schedule them together. Based on the meeting results, we also think of ideas about how we can realize visually so we can use the reference searches and we do the picking of the searches. The reporters go ahead to do their coverage, and we are also doing our job on a parallel basis. While the journalists are writing their stories, sometimes they provide us directly, or sometimes you know, he is putting his article on the CMS, and we are just you know, doing the editing in the meantime. So we just do, do the editing together on the go. So these are the actually preliminary job about writing an article. So we do have the drawing. Axio is the 
device that I'm using for drawing. So Axio is quite good for me because it is very useful for the planning and the writing up without having the full text. So the reporters do not have to explain in detail about the article, but be able to show me what he is trying to achieve. And also sometimes we wanted to know what would be the end results. Using Axio, you're able to see the rough ideas about the end result, so that it's very useful and helpful for you. So it has that advantage. So on the screen, you can also have the communications about which part needs more elaboration, which part should be changed, and so on. Therefore, the further questions can be made, and also further requests and also can be delivered. Then we are just doing together about the designing and the layout. So that's the end of the planner's job, actually. And after having the product, Every time the product is out, we have the review and correction until the end of the day. Now, once the article is open, that's not the end of the story. We have to have the advertisement, so interactive contents that cannot be put on the porter. We have to play our trumpet, otherwise nobody will just look at us. Therefore, we have to do the outreach to the SNS and also in the dot com. We have to carry the banners as well. That's the promotion activities. That promotion should be done for at least about one or two weeks. So in the meantime, we can also see some errors and change them and correct them if needed. So that will be the wrap up time. Depending on the nature of the job of the planners, we do need a lot of communications with the journalists. We have to have direct communications with the reporters, and sometimes we find it necessary for us to have a daily conversation. It might sound cumbersome, but sometimes it can be also emotional when the time gets tougher. So through my experience, even though it is very difficult to have a very frank communications, it is necessary to have the very frank and open communications in order to have the good end result. And that's what my experience tells me. Therefore, I put the emphasis on the communications, especially communications with the journalists. Now, in order for the data journalism and interactive to shine, I have my own questions to myself. Number one question is about the merit. Do I have the merit when it is based on the digital? So is it necessary for us to explain it in writing, or is it better to use the digital? Second question of mine is, what would the users need to know? What would need the readers would want to know? So for the case of the articles about the torture room in Namyeongdong and the room cells and the for the very poor people, the readers will be very much interested in knowing what the articles are saying because we have to keep in line with the level of interest of the readers. If the digital is really a decorative and decorative only. We don't have to spend that much time, so our digital should be serving the needs of the readers. And also, third one is that you know, we have to have the synergy. So without thinking of this you know, uh, the article, we have to have the synergy. And also, last question is about the effect on the mobile. So you know, in the, on the mobile, you know, nothing should be over emphasized or you know, less emphasized. So we have to have a trimming down. So it should be it should be very fit for mobile. Doesn't have to be too much or too less. So far, I've given you the planning process so far. Now I'm going to give you some tip to make it more useful. There's This is another case of having the article of the putting out the list of the preschools that are not so much safe to the children. And the release of the list was made. So we were trying to realize that this information can be given to the general public so that they can be referenced to. That was actually Scoop by NBC. And I looked at the Scoop article, and there was not a detailed list of it. They just put up the whole file. In itself, was, it was okay. I find I found it useful. I imagined myself as a mother of a preschooler. If I were a mother of a preschooler, 
the whole file will not be so much helpful to me or convenient to me than knowing if my preschools in my neighborhood can be the subject of this criticism and so on. So I really wanted to make it in the form of search. So I changed the form based on the file. If you are working for the government, you would know that all the files and the documents are following the different forms. So making in one form or following one form would be almost impossible, as you know. So I worked with, with my team members for days and nights, for several days and nights. So I was almost finished it. And after completing it and also putting it on the porter, that was a bomb because everybody was interested. All the moms were so much excited. And also, they had all the moms' cafes on the internet were just you know, exploding. So it was a very memorable thing that I can remember as the good result. Also, that year, we also had a very big hit of the article here. That's about the small living cells for the very poor people. We were reporting about the structures and neighborhoods and how they live inside these small cells. When we were planning our articles, instead of just de explaining details about how they live, we wanted to have a very clear image of how they are living. So we thought that the several pictures of their livelihood inside the cell building would be very good. So in the beginning, the reporter was doing the interview with the people, and he was taking some pictures. But those pictures were not so much lively to my eyes. Therefore, we wanted to have this 360 degrees of shooting during the interview. So I myself actually have been dispatch it to the place for interview. Sometimes I find it very necessary for the planners to be on the site as well. If I were just in a stay, staying, staying put in the office to do the, the job here, I wouldn't uh, do the better job. However, I was actually following our journalists to have the interview there. So I was familiar with their layout and structures. So. I decided to use the 360 degrees, and I, I tried to make it more lively. This got very good reaction. Also, it had the high ranking and the popularity of the articles. So, the, so it would also have social impact as well. This is the torture room story in Namyeongdong area. So we have the interactive service here. And also, starting from the news article, we actually changed the direction of the article. So we decided to make it like a script for a movie or documentary rather than a news article. So because of the time constraint, now we're just you know, skipping this. This is a very recent one. That's about the physically interactive that has been in the procedures of the criminal court. So one person get, got into the whole process to experience the procedure of the criminal procedures. That was in explaining the importance of the procedures and also the very complicated relationship between the prosecutors and the police. And also, the, if it is interactive, we can also see how long it can take and how much complexity it can have. So as you see here, we have a very complicated tree structures. All the things are being repeated. And also, we have the request for the investigation. We have those requests for the protection. So these are actually repeating themselves. Therefore, in every step, they require also the questions and answers. We also had to think of all the possible scenarios out of the whole steps. And also, in order to make it the digital, we should not make any cell left behind or empty. Therefore, each cell took so much time for us to fill. Also, this is a service based on the experience of people. When they are expanding the screen, it should move very naturally. Also, when it is closing down or it getting smaller, that's vice versa. And also, the Minister of the Justice also made promotion of this, saying that they're going to use this. And also, 
because of his, of his comment, we got more popularity. So it was very meaningful for them. Still remembering that. This is another story. The title is "The Public Servant Fallen Into the Farmland," with the title, and we also have a very instant visualization. The story says the reason why the public servants were using the land to have their investment. So the farmland was misused by these public servants. Instead of telling the story, we wanted to show how much land has been misappropriated by these public servants, public officials. Also, we need to have a lot of data in, at the back end, and then we purify this data to show the end result very clearly. So we were just moving into the end result very smoothly. These are the list of my cases that I can show you. So this is summary. The interactive design of Korea, and also as well as in Hanguk Gilbo, has been developed very much until today. So we have some articles that cannot show the whole pie of the picture, but we are using the digital to show the actual graph of that. So we have been making our advancement bit by bit until we reach this story. And we are also trying to create a new type of story. So this is the evolution path we have made so far. And I'm proud to say that we have developed into this. So this is a very short period of time to make the interactive. Actually, it started May 2018. Up to October 2021, we have 17 interactive released for the last three years. Maybe 17 is not a big number, and maybe three years is not a long time. But we were also encouraged by having the awards on many occasions like this. This is a list of the awards we received. So we feel that we have full support by the external people as well. So internally, we have the higher ranking in the attention of the people. And also externally, we were just cited by other people telling us that it is a good job. Last but not least, as a planner, when I have the face up with the journalism, I have some tips for you. So we have to have, number one, a variation, not just copying the article. So digital is something that you can add up on top of the article itself, that you can make it more brilliant than the original story. So that's the joint job with you and the journalist. Second, you have to make the experience of the data and story. So if you have the full experience of the data and story, you can have the better result. So you can maximize the effect. Third tip of mine is to have suggestions as much as possible, as many as possible. And also you have to try various types of the things. You are the owner of the project. You are the one who can initiate these suggestions. So you have to do it as much as possible. Last but not least, my suggestion to you is that a small success will make the attention from other people different. So if you are successful in smaller steps, maybe they are going to look at you differently. So I encourage many people who are trying to do the digital or who are initiating digital now, you have to move on and do the same thing over and over until you get recognized. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Park. Hanguk Ilbo has been well known for its design and on different formations for the articles. And she has been giving us the details about how they are collaborating between the planners and the journalists. For those of the audience watching YouTube, please write your questions on the chat box so that we can just get the answers for you later. So please do not hesitate to make questions. The next presenter is Ms. Kim Yoon-jin, digital reporter at Kyungyang Shinmun Data Journalism Team. The title of the presentation is a review of five years experimenting interactive news. So in the news digital area, she has done interactive reporting, production, and creation. Hello. 
as introduced, my name is Kim Yoon Jin. So I think my presentation is rather long, and I'm worried that I won't be able to cover all of them. I will, I will try to be as speedy as I can. So to introduce myself briefly, so it's only been four to five years since I've been working at the media, so I'm at a junior level. So from the very time when I was employed by my employers, I was employed as the dedicated IT personnel. And recently, we created a new team called Data Journalism Team, and I am now part of that team to work on data journalism. So this is a data journalism conference, but you might wonder why I'm talking about interactive news. So I prepared this to answer the question that you might have. So the space that best shows data analysis outcome is the web space or interactive news. So that's why I, pre I prepared this example. So this is a uh, article that we published recently based on data given by Seoul Metro. And so we measured the platform gap at metro stations. And we found out that there are many stations uh, whose platform gap is greater than it should. And nevertheless, no supplementary measures have been taken. And so the platform gap in metro stations in Seoul cannot be shown in a single article, but in an interactive news format, uh, people can actually take a look at all of them in a visual way. So rather than writing this into a online article, interactive news is the best way to deliver this piece of information to our readers. As you can see, if you select the Songshinyode station, the average platform gap is as large as 20 centimeters. And in those stations, uh, we saw a lot of accidents occurring. And you can see all this in the interactive report. Then interactive news or data journalism are new concepts. And why do we need to explore them? And I thought of some reasons. And I believe the most important thing is number three, uniqueness or differentiation. Uh, the media outlets are facing risks in terms of their profit model. And you know we are in an era where we're talking about AI journalism. So therefore, we need to be able to provide a solution that provides quality journalism. And I believe that data journalism and interactive news is necessary to that end. And whether you know they're Washington Post or the New York Times overseas. And in providing membership and paid subscription, these uh, data journalism and interactive news can really uh, attract people to sign up for paid subscription. So the team that is in charge of interactive news and data journalism has changed. In 2013, we began uh, under the name of interactive team. And at the time, you know, just using social media was new back then. So our team was uh, responsible for social media news. But as you know, like, you the key platforms were used to be Facebook, but now it's YouTube, uh, Instagram, and TikTok. So major platforms always change. And so the contents that are created by the team and many other teams uh, were different depending on what platform is in trend these days. But what has not changed over the years is interactive news. And we have engaged in interactive news for eight years years and released about 100 releases. And we have about one to three people in the team uh, whose average production period is about two weeks. You might think that this is a small number of people, but we have uh, IT people plus the reporters and the IT person, as a matter of fact. And as I said before, the average production period is about two weeks. And just like Hangul Ilbo, we would do on-the-scene coverages, or sometimes uh, we would look at some data and collaborate with other entities to create these articles. And 
In the process of making interactive news, we do have a guideline, and I attach some of the guideline here. So in each stage, this guideline specifies what the IT person and what the reporter needs to do. But as a matter of fact, uh, both the IT people and the reporters are involved in every step, and they perform certain tasks in their tests. And to be frank, the roles and responsibilities of each member is not clearly divided yet or set in stone because we uh, and so we are more flexible um, so you know if we are to just abide strictly by the guideline it takes too much time so sometimes in, in producing interactive news you need to be flexible so the new contents team and data journalism team usually produce interactive news that look like the examples that I'm going to show right now so Usually, we combine scroll and animation layout in our interactive news. Scroll is, you know, basically a, a layout uh, that fall, uh, goes from the top to bottom by scrolling the mouse or by, you know, scrolling the page of mobile devices, and we add animation layout here. So as you can see on the screen, uh, this interactive news is about the Rohingya uh, refugees. So based on the report that we secured, we made some visualizations on the web like this. And as for this one, so thankfully, last year, we won an award at the Data Journalism Award. It is called There Was Kim Yong-kyun Every Way. And it talks about the deaths that occur from industrial accidents every year in Korea. So we archived uh, the cases. And so the interactive news was not just a news, but also an archive. And it's not just an archive as well. There are calendars and charts that visualize many statistical figures. And as for this article, uh, the film Parasite was receiving a lot of attention overseas. And here in Korea, we wondered how many people actually live in these low uh, areas uh, that were portrayed in the film. So we uh, obtained the data of all the people who live in the semi-basement homes, but if we were to just, just use that data on a text report, then we'd just only be giving figures. So we wanted to give some graphics. And this was time when local elections were held, so we wanted people to be able to see how many people in their own local region live in semi-basement. So through this interactive news, uh, people were able to search their neighborhood and see how many people live in semi-basements. And on the top right, uh, it, it shows you how many people live in local governments across the nation, among them what percentage lives in semi-basement houses. And on the at the bottom, it focuses on the Seoul metropolitan areas. And we saw the data that has high correlation with different districts. Uh, so this this is a visualization of that as well. So there is a piece called Witnesses of Climate Change, which was made last year. And actually, this news was published on the news in text form five times. But we thought that we could do more because this piece of information is so valuable that we took some of the articles that were published and extracted what's important from it and visualized the contents to make this interactive news. So when the text articles were written, it did not receive a lot of attention. But when we rewrote these articles in the form of interactive news, it was circulated broadly. And one broadcasting company mentioned how well created this is. 
So you might think, you know, be surprised that, you know, some contents that we've used already can again receive attention if we produce them in different formats. And next, it is during when the number N room scandal occurred. So it's, talk, it's about sexual crime that happens across digital space. And there should be a chronicle or a history of such sexual crimes that have happened in online spaces. So that was a topic of this interactive news. And the structure of this is very unique because on just like Tare function in Twitter. So we, if you click on a certain timeline, it highlights not only that event, but also other events that are related to that. And it shows um, how the court proceeding is in present state. And so that was a very unique factor of this interactive news, and it also received a lot of attention. So, so far, I have shown uh, some simple interactive news like, you know, scrolls and animation based on which users can interact with the news. But we also provide game format news. It's web browser based. And if I were to share some of the responses for these game news, is that we're not doing this anymore because uh, the output is not so insufficient uh, compared to the amount of effort that goes into this game-based news. So based on this experience of Failure. We were able to find out that users don't want to use their time unless it's something really fun or something that is meaningful or constructive to them. But the source codes and algorithms uh, that we use to realize these gains can be reused a lot of times. So we thought that although we failed, we can always reuse the source codes and algorithms and they can become a good asset for us. So we had this positive mindset. So as you can see, this is a case of a foreign media outlet. Uh, Steer through the Suez Canal is a title of this newspaper article. And it shows how or it allows the users to simulate how difficult it is for a vessel to go through the Suez Canal. And also on the bottom right, it's a simulation uh, based on AI as to how you can navigate with a particle. And that's what we wanted to do, you know, using 3D to allow uh, the interaction with the users, but that was not what we were able to do. We, This is what we did. It's not 3D, it's more close to 2D. So to provide a high level quality content, as you've seen in the earlier example, all the uh, contents need to be created and you need to be able to use these uh, tools like 3JS to realize the graphic, but it's fairly difficult. So we do face limitations. However, as I said earlier, we can reuse the codes that we used for game news. As you can see on the screen on the left, it's something that we did in 2018 right after the college entrance exam uh, to organize a history of education in Korean schools. And people can basically answer these questions that are given. And uh, it shows then um, what generation they belong to in terms of the school history. But this did not receive a lot of attention from the public. But we reuse the code. And the year after, to for the March 1st independence movement, we had this interactive news called, what kind of person do you think you were before the March 1st movement? And it was created in a short period of time, maybe about a week or so. 
Nevertheless, this interactive news was a great hit. It reaped a lot of success. And these are the codes that were recycled. And we are no longer called a new contents team. In July, data journalism team was newly created. And the interactive news is now under the responsibility of this new team. But it is still in its pilot stage. And it is comprised of three people a reporter, digital journalist, myself, and an intern. And we would produce a story, make that into an online article, and also create that in the form of interactive news. So it's in an OSM format. That's the goal. That's the general goal that we have. So our our, we are also under the name Dive today. So this data journalism team called Dive has so far published two to three articles. First is an award-winning piece which sees the network of scholars who took part in the Moon Jae-in administration. And through crawling, we, based on the native neighbor academy data, figured out how these uh, scholars are related to each other and what their network might be. And so we calculated the values, and we separated them into nodes and links. And through VJS library, we were able to visualize this piece of information. So at the top, it's what's shown on the web. And at the bottom right is the picture that appeared in the text article. But as I said earlier, in papers, it's not so easy to figure out or comprehend what this picture actually represents. But online, the user can click each individual, and through tooltip, the information is provided for each individual. So when we look at the highlighting function and other things, you know, interactive news is a far more effective way of delivering these types of information. And this is the article about the, or the news about the platform gap that I talked about earlier. So we did have this on paper as well. So after interactive news is published, uh, we conduct reviews. And it's, our conclusion is that it is difficult to create an interactive news that you know would receive a satisfactory level in all the standards of a good interactive news. And if I looked at our achievements, um, as I said before, uh, we have created interactive news for the past five eight years. So we were able to establish some awareness uh, in the industry. And uh, there has been some outsourcing done as well in collaboration with external organizations and companies. And therefore, we were able to generate profit. And uh, this also heightened awareness for the need for digital contacts within the editing bureau. And through many trials and errors, we were able to gain a lot of experiences, modularized sources and templates and so on. And while dealing with more uh, than 100 interactive news, we also gained other understandings. And one is be simple. So in the past, interactive news itself was just so new, hovering with the mouse, you know, clicking something and popping something out was very new to the readers. But today, that's not so new anymore. And in the past, the contents were consumed mainly through personal computers, but these days it's mobile devices, and therefore users do not prefer uh, an interactive page with complex structure anymore. And you can, we cannot make, we should not make an interactive news that looks like a digital pamphlet. 
So because we were obsessed about breaking away from paper format, uh, we did a lot of things. But the more we did, they looked like digital pamphlets, and they would not have substances. There would be no hierarchy among the text, and there would be no context. So this type of format should be avoided as much as possible. So if you look at some common points of interactive news that were well received, is that there should be an intro for immersion. So once the readers come across the content, it should not be uh, the story that they come across first, but there should be some kind of an intro that would attract them. And we would provide, uh, we would have to provide minimum interaction with maximum effect. And the structure has to be simple, and we need to have a good thematic consciousness. But if I were to also tell you some limitations that we face, uh, interactive news cannot be provided via portal through e-link. So, therefore, we would have to circulate interactive news through buzzword or voluntary sharing and so on. So these are some of the things that we made. And yes, some of them were popular and some of them had a lot of pra uh, traffic. But our goal, you know, loyal uh, readers and um, quality journalism, were those two satisfied? That still remains as a question. And another limitation is, is it possible to generate profit for interactive news? As I said earlier, we don't have a clear profit model. And for readers, it's still uh, new for them to pay money to actually consume uh, these articles. Uh, so that's some of the limitations as well. So let me just tell you about some libraries and visualization tool that can be used in interactive news. Actually, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to skim through them. And you may refer to my presentation later to see them. So it's unfortunate that I wasn't able to cover everything that I've prepared. But you know, interactive news and data journalism is pursued by many people who are listening to this presentation, I'm sure. And I hope that my presentation was helpful. Thank you, Ms. Kim Yujin, for your presentation. So questions are being raised through YouTube chat. And we have one more speaker to go, so we will address those questions later. Our next speaker is Ms. Anhe Min from SBS. She's working as journalist at the data journalism team, and she's going to give us the newsletter from the data journalism team. I, myself, am a subscriber for the Mabu newsletter from SBS data journalism team, so I'm very interested in knowing. So it's he. Thank you very much. My name is Annie Hemin. I'm working for the data journalism team in SBS. Before I start my presentation, I'm going to give my own introduction. Mabu's team was actually starting from the end of 2015, and the articles were started to be written from 2016. I myself have joined in 2016 as an intern, so I was working in the internet team, and then I became a full member as a regular employee in 2017. It has been roughly about six years since I am involved in the data journalism. I am experiencing the environment data journalism every day since then on. And also, we do have our concerns about why we're not so much popular as we expected, even though we made a tremendous amount of time and effort. So as a response to that, I'd like to talk about our newsletter activities and our trials and errors. I'm going to start by showing you the three letters, newsletters. So the Mabuza team as actually have the Mabu newsletter. The second one is made by the surprise team, and data team is also running the cow.letter. 
The third letter is data journalism letter by economist. As our understanding goes, the newsletters related to data journalism are all about these things. Among them, we are the first comer, actually, because we were first planning this in 2015, and then we started to issue the newsletter from 2016. We had two rounds of reorganizations, but our framework has been maintained so far and roughly. Each of the page can be explained to you one by one so that we can understand what intention was there. And this is the first phase. So we also had our message that we are following you from the Mabu Tak team. It was kind of event. And this one off event started as our teaser. In order to issue a newsletter, we know that why people are not watching us or looking at us much, even though we were awarded by many organizations. And also our concern is that why are we not remembered by the people? In 2018, the Munich was started, and it was November 10th, and then the US so newsletter was actually promoted that much. So we wanted to just have our follow-up of our readers. So that is how we started our planning. So that was the program to just go to our readers. I think it was the end of 2019, Reuters Journalism Institute issued a report, and their concern was about the method of young people to consume the news programs, and also what action and reaction have been made by the young people after reading them. What I was interested in was actually two. Number one, young people are accepting the news as the growth and the interest. To the prior generations, news is something do you have to have, you are compelled to be con in contact with. But young people thought differently because they thought it would, as long as I re read the news, the news should be helpful to me. Therefore, they are very much concerned about the efficacy and the benefit of reading the news. So the institute issued a report about this. So with that, I was also holding a lot of workshops in order to have the better understanding about the news. And the next one is, we, the left one, we have a cartoon that is almost coming from the US newspapers in the past. We have the new ideas, but design was old style cartoons. So we will need to have the mixture of these two things. So in our own way, we also had our ecology made. And also, we wanted to have the interactions with the readers in this format. This is the final format we decided upon before launching. The first newsletter issue was launched in February. In the earlier days, we had two tracks. Every Thursday, we have the main newsletter. And every Tuesday, we had the self booklet of the newsletter, extra letter. The main letter was talking about the timely issues of the social sciences. And also, if data was available, we included the data as well in order to see the context and also in order for them to see the context. Now, on the extra letter, we wanted to have some other contents that can be explained better in data form. So this is the junk chart as a menu as represented by the cat here. In this corner of junk chart, we wanted to indicate wrong data and also the problematic data and the issues that we have to think about when we want to data for the articles. So this is kind of column type. And also at the bottom, you see a chicken there. Its menu name is the clue. It is kind of quiz service for the subscribers. So we wanted to enhance their consciousness and our awareness of the data. The first phase was rather successful. We were recognized by our readers, and our subscription ship has increased dramatically. The problem, however, is that we had to spend so much effort compared to the benefit, because we also had Mabu C as a separate project. So we were running two projects at a time. We soon found that we were overwhelmed by the size of the two projects, according to the members of our team. 
We knew that the Mabu was quite popular and being adored by some fans, and we got a lot of feedback. But workload on ourselves was so much, so we decided that we were not able to continue that way. So we had the first round of reorganization. When that reorganization happened, we had a lot of ideas. So we knew that there are so many good articles about the data journalism. We have to introduce these articles to the readers, and also we can have some kind of curation job of the existing articles. So after the reorganization, this is the new format we followed. In the past, we had only one content at a time, but we are now spreading all different articles according to the journalist. For example, if I remember what has mentioned by the Hangul Group and Kyang Shimun in the earlier speeches, we have to now know what kind of needs are there, the efforts are there to understand. And if we have some consumption of the news like this, it will be good. So that's kind of idea of curation, not just for the reference. We also wanted to continue our data journalism, and also we also provided the original news articles as well. You have the three columns here. The second and third column here are actually produced by our team members. We can call them data columns. So the first one is in the middle is, is the areas of the development limitation. So this is public areas that were limited in the development. We introduced those areas. At the bottom, in the center, we have the chicken here. That's the interrelationship and correlation between the chocolate and the health. Also on the right, we have the more appealing features for the young people. So we came up with the idea of using music. So this column is about using music as an appealing source. At the bottom is about the visualization of data. So this is some insight by the designers in terms of the visualizations. We also had this feature to have the awareness. So starting from that, from August 2020 to August 2021, for one full year, which is the longest time, we had the provision of our services starting from reference to original content. However, unfortunately, we faced with a very difficult barrier here, starting from the reference, because we also had the provisions of these references from other countries as well. New York Times, Washington, the Washington Post also had, another you know, newspapers also had the very good data journalism there. We wanted to introduce those articles from those very prestigious newspapers, but those international newspapers changed their policy to paid subscription, not free views. So if I had the curation of these articles, then we will be criticized. So the referencing was not possible anymore. From then on, we focused our attention more on the original content than reference. That's how we decided to produce our content as well. Onto the sub stack, if it is a color letters here, we use these places to put our articles. So in the sub stack of these, we we began to have more subscribers onto these walls vertically. After having the paywall, as I said, it was very, it was very difficult for us to have the reference. So this is why we began to have the third page, and this is phase three. This is the current shape of Mabu News now. The previous newsletter format was not possible anymore, while the demand by the subscribers was getting higher. The lawyer customers had to be found, and we had to have the fervent 
and ardent fans of ours. We wanted to know how to make them possible. Then this is the result of our discussions. So we wanted to put more efforts onto the Mabu News. So this is the third version after having the second round of reorganization. So as if we were just having the paid services, we wanted to know which persona is used for which part part of the our assets, and we wanted to be very clear cut in our criteria from the beginning. Our target is to help our readers to have clearer concept about what they have not fully understood from the articles. We wanted to send our newsletter so that I, we can help them to have a much better image of the things that are reading. So how we're doing. So we started with the theme of the gaps. By theme of the gaps, I mean there is a difference of the susceptibility of the readers. Some people value gender issue the most, while some others believe that these uncomfortable ideas are not their taste. Environmental issue is the same. We also have the dichotomy of the people. Amongst the young people, they value the environmental issues as if their own life. However, the older generations do not have the feeling about the environment as the young people do. Also, education is also another example for having this dichotomy of the feelings. Young school children have the importance of education because they have to go to college. But older generations may have forgotten the importance of education. So if they have the gaps of the susceptibility, understanding, or feeling, we can fill the gap with the, with the data. Sometimes we can prove that you are saying is right and also, you can, we can say that what you believe is true according to this fact. So it's kind of encourage, encouragement of the people to continue their beliefs. And this is why we had our newsletter in this form. It's been two or three months since we had the latest reorganization. According to the feedback from our readers, we feel very fortunate and grateful because many of them have seemingly understood our intention. The most memorable feedback is a very simple but short one sentence. It was the discussion point that I wanted to have with my children. End of quote. So with the newsletter, if family is having the discussion with the members inside, that would be the fulfillment of our our wishes. Getting the feedback, we were mo more encouraged to do better in our newsletter job. Technically speaking, at the moment, we are doing things this way. For the main letter, we are using STB to send our newsletters. Also inside this, we have some kind of illustrative ideas in a very simple form of its image than the original content. However, if you want to have deeper understanding or have the in detail of the article in the sub stack, you can also read the data and see the data there because we have more in-depth data in here. So then you can take the data out if you want to, and also you can have the time to analyze the data here. Without having the newsletter, and if we had written the articles only, we wanted to, we might have wanted to put as much as possible in the newsletter and writing. And we might, might have made a very dense article. However, with the presence of newsletter, we know that we can just take the workload off to the newsletter from the main news article. So it's a combination of reading and seeing at the same time, so it can be helpful to the readers. My time is almost up. This is the last page. I believe the most important factor is the readership themselves. So in the past, when I was writing an article, I thought I was putting the importance of the readers. However, only after I started to make a newsletter, I realized that I had to think of our readers more. So 
the top priority should really be given to the readers. So that's the realization I made after making the newsletter. So this is not good, just not just good for the data journalism, but for the whole journalist journalism itself. So if you are in the journalistic world, you have to think of this kind of use of data for newsletters and others. The last one is the QR code for the Mabu News. So I hope that any of you can have a just notification in here. Please come in and take your footprint here. Thank you very much. It will not take long. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. News organizations and the private companies have had the data generation. The examples have been shared and explained, and also their concerns have been also explained. We had questions on the chat box, and also we have pre-delivered questions as well. This session should be finished by 2040. Out of the questions from the audience, we have a selection of questions only. And then also, I will take turn by asking questions from me as well before we end this session. First of all, so among the viewers, some questions were raised. And one of those questions, or some of those questions, uh, were focusing on uh, DR presenter Park in let me read the question. Compare, comparing the situation when you have the planner or when you do not have the planner, do you have any advantages or disadvantages? Can you explain that? Most of other companies do not have planners, as I understand. But our organization has planners like me by having the communications in between the IT people and the journalists. As you know, the journalists use different languages than those people in the IT department. Their way of working is also different, so the modes of operation are different. Until the end of the final product is finished, their communications, therefore, might not be smooth. Planners like me in between here can do th those jobs. I've been in the journalism for 15 years, and my major was IT, so I have not my knowledge about my job, and I have my own working experience, so I am very proper to have the better communications between the two worlds. As you know, journalists put their emphasis on the essence of their stories or purpose of their stories, then the IT realization or layout. Therefore, journalists are not proper to have the good explanation about what they want. I, on behalf of the journalists, explain in their own words and languages to the IT people so that IT people can understand better. So end result, I am sure, is heightened quality and guarantee of understanding, as I think. So the people understanding IT are more and more needed in the organizations of media, right? Yes, I think so. I think this is, must be a common question by all the journalist world. So the designers or IT people are working for the media. Are their remunerations or working conditions got better so far? So any answer? Commuting, please. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So I'm not sure if I'm in the position to answer this question, but uh, recently we did conduct a hiring process, and one of the biggest challenges is that in terms of developers, they don't really want to come to media outlets. Nevertheless, uh, you know, we made a lot of promotions, and thankfully some developers uh, did apply, and we're in the process of a. Uh, interview but whether it comes to data journalism or data or journalism itself you know the developers do not develop based on a given storyboard, but they would start from scratch. And if there are some technical difficulties, uh, they would try to, or they would need to try to find out a way to make that work. And that's not how 
how things are done in traditional IT world. And we also need developers who are interested in news, who are interested in content, and at the same time can develop well. So those kind of developers are hard to find. And even if there are those developers, uh, you don't know if they still want to stay at our company. Uh, so that's really challenging in terms of finding talents. So a person by the ID, Oksudong Kultanji, was raised the first question, and the person by the name of ID Min Ho Shin raised a second question. So let me then give you a question to the reporters. So as for Mabu News, you said the, the contents would have to be shared among parents and children. And the reader response to the outcome is highly important, but I'm curious to know about the internal reactions, the response of your organization. So to two to three weeks or maybe even, even a week, you might be able to create this kind of news if there is a template, but it takes a lot of effort. and. When things are successful, you receive awards, and I'm sure there are some internal assessment or evaluation done on your teams. And uh, so once you produce and create an outcome, how is its success defined? Is there like a standard or a performance indicator that you have at your organization? So for example, or do you have like a standard, if it, if it managed to generate some profit, then it's deemed as successful? So can you share your organization's case? Uh, Ms. Pagine from Hangul Gilbo. <laughs> Maybe another criteria can be number of hits. The how many is big enough. Well, number of hits varies depending on the time period and the topics. Therefore, there cannot be quantifiable criteria. The biggest hit came from the article about the preschools that have been listed and more than 300,000 hits were made. Also, another article about the torture rooms in Namyeongdong was exceeding the average. So when we talk about all these things, we have to know the average number of hits, and also we have to ha know how much would be in the bigger than the average as well, so how much is you know, successful enough. Also, we have to know those you know, the comments of the relevant people. We can also check the comments from the SNS as well as by looking at all these you know, comments from the SNS and coming from the comments from the related people, we can decide which one is successful or not. So, so and you also said that you know, there was you know, programs like that. So the monetization was also possible is that, you know, but I don't think that the monetization is you know, much you know, frequent. Now, do you have any case to share? So are you so you want me to share the case of monetization. So there are two types. Uh, sometimes we will be able to monetize through the articles that have been published, or sometimes uh, there we will be commissioned by external organizations. So in other words, the other organizations would outsource their work to us, and that would lead to monetization. And you know, I told you about a case about the March 1st uh, special feature. Uh, in which we recycle the past code. And a museum wanted to actually purchase that. And that's when we were able to monetize a project. And other ones are usually uh, based on requests or commissions. So for example, organizations want to deliver the data they have to the public, but they are limited in delivering that. So we would then step up. Uh, and that would lead to monetization. So from the news company as a whole, what kind of mission is requested to the data journalism team? So for example, you need to create 10 products per year, or you need to achieve certain number of hits. Are there any uh, goals that are set by the organization for your team? So what has been requested uh, of my team is that there is really not, no specific things. So maybe 
So we don't have any requests for PVs or profit, but what is requested of us is that so the Kim Young Kim, Kim Young Gun report was one of the greatest, uh, one of the successful pieces that we created. It did not generate any profit, but it had social repercussions, and many ministries. Uh, referred to that article and the law was amended so my company wants the team to create some pieces that really adhere to the spirit of journalism while of course profit generalization is important and yes monetization does occur but there is no specific business model and what's more important is that we need to have a structure of B2C in which the readers or the public are willing to pay for our articles, but in the current ecosystem, that is difficult and this is not a problem that can be solved by a single media outlet alone. So through data journalism and interactive news, we are able to generate profit, but that cannot be the number one goal. So there are other questions that were raised, and there are questions about interface or accessibility, and I think this could be answered by SBS team. So can you answer this question, which I'm going to read? Young people are familiar with the interactive media. However, the middle-aged subscribers, the, the, the existing ones, might have difficulty of getting the consumption of the digital. So do you have any considerations to solve the problems or help them to be more familiarized? Do you have anything that you want to change while pursuing your programs about the interactive? Based on my experience, that kind of consideration has to be made anyway, naturally, because when we make the final decision, the, the chief editors at the desk are middle-aged people. If they themselves feel it difficult or hard to understand, they are the, really the test of the difficulty. So naturally, we have to consider what can be understood by the middle-aged people, just like my bosses. So we have concentrated on our questions to the media only. So now I'm going to have a question to a private company. So it's for Mr. Chu Jae-sun for, you know, your company provides data based on speech and speakers. And I would like to ask this question to you. So you focused on the speech data of presidential candidates and explained their meaning and significance. And yeah, it's great that the readers are able to understand these data in a more easy way but when providing this kind of services, what do you pay most attention to or what do you tend to emphasize? Uh, so when people speak, their thoughts will be reflected directly in the speech, but and sometimes that would not be the case. Giving Korea's, uh, you know, culture, sometimes people use, um, you know, say something that they don't really mean, but it means the other way. And when we look at the speech data, uh, we want to know if that speech is truly aligned with the thought of the speaker or not. That's one of our biggest challenges and concerns, and we have been able to solve this problem to some extent today. So for example, a pretty, the word pretty means that, oh, you're so pretty that I'm going to die. Or some people say, oh, you're so pretty that, that you, you're good for nothing. So these are two expressions to express how pretty the certain individual is. But when we just look at the text itself, the second sentence might not convey how pretty that other person is. So we need to make sure that the text data is delivered without error. And that's one of our biggest challenges. 
So another question goes to Ms. Park in -hae. Well, we might have had a similar question earlier. This question says as follows. From the perspective of the planner, in your own work, what are the things that you have to consider the most or do you have to be careful about most? Probably you need to have some activities to grow the number of planners as well. So do you have anything that you want to have from the company? What makes you happy if the company does something? Are you the only one? My boss is was well, used to be a planner, but I am the only official planner of the company right now. But we have two people experienced in planning. In my own work, I believe that not just the external activities, but also the internal activities of getting the understanding is quite important because we haven't had enough jobs to have the more consensus about the importance of the planners inside the company. Once the article is finished, it is very important to have the official review amongst all the internal members. And also, we should have more contacts amongst members of the company. However, that's lacking. We haven't had many contacts amongst the people in here. Even in my company, there must be many people who don't know the existence of the job of planning. And they're just journalists, and they do not have the full understanding about what planners are doing from the beginning. So that's why we have to have the training sessions for the members of our own company so that the awareness of the planning is quite heightened. As a planner, I also work with many other people, like journalists and the IT people. But within the IT team, many of them are almost hidden. They are not showing off what they're doing. So even if I try to make understanding of other you know, people from the journalists, the journalists do not have full understanding about what IT people are doing. So as for the journalists, don't you think that journalists are studying on their own about the IT and codes? What do you think about that? When I first joined the company and started as a you know, member of the media, I was a designer, actually. So I was doing the coding. But after becoming a planner, rather than the coding jobs, I thought the planning was actually a fit myself. That was That is why I stopped studying coding. But actually, in order to do my job better. We have to have the reference. We have to find the pick of the coding. So that's what I normally do in my own processes. So far, we've been hearing the stories about the internal processing and internal collaboration. So that's my next question. How do you select the theme? What process is it going through? I mean, for example, when you have the dis internal decision making, does it have a just go to the next step? Or do you have to go through another green light from another bus? Because the selection of the theme is quite important, as I think, as well as the timeliness, as you said. Yes, for example, when we do the collaboration, we do have our planning already drafted. So the overall picture has been outlined, so we are on the same page. So we can do the storytelling or the visualization of the story. So that's the thing we have been doing th thus far. However, we wanted to go further. We just should not stop there. Therefore, we wanted to have another content that is being created on the part of the uh, data journalism. So we wanted to have a whole new experience for the readers. Luckily, in my organization, I am relatively free from the intervention of the people on, in the upper echelon. So we have our culture in our company that you know, kind of autonomy can be used by me. The only problem I have is the convincing part with the journalists. I really need to have some time taken for the conversation with the journalists so that they can understand better. And then they will not have many misunderstanding about the finer product when they are out after having the um, wrong communications. And the journalists are very much in favor of these conversations that we are doing so well. Ms. Naran, I have another question for you. I know that out there, there are so many people who want to be data journalists. So you know, for the data journalists would be, what do you want to say? You have been in this job for the last three years in SBS. 
So in your job, do you have any advice to the hopeful data journalists them about the, their preparations or their notion about the important things? Yes. I sometimes have a chance to have a lecture on the data journalism to the college students. I feel that the number of students who want to be data journalists has been increasing. I say number one advice is that you have to have as many experience as possible. So I know that you want to be a data journalist because you are interested in journalism. So you should have the statistical knowledge and skill as well, as mentioned by many other people. We have to collaborate on many occasions with other people. So the not just the development, but also the, you have to have the good understanding about the IT and coding. So if you have at least some experience about developing the codes, that would be very good. Thank you. The session has been about the data journalism. We have heard the stories from the people working and the field from the private company and the media. We were also sharing cases of their final product as well. We were also doing a lot of things to make better understanding about what data journalism was about. So we have these four panelists who have been giving us a lot of good cases, and also they have been answering the questions from the audience via YouTube. I really hope that the data journalism can have a better step forward in the future, so I really need your support from the general public. Thank you very much. Thank you, these four panelists. Thank you.